Hello once again and thank you for joining us here at Richie's Truck and Auto, your diesel performance specialist. I've had many requests on how to properly replace and prime the filters um, upon initial installation and service replacement of the, uh, the fast filtration units, um, both the water separator and the, uh, the lower micron fuel filter. Um, first I wanted to cover real quickly the, uh, the differences between the platinum, titanium and the filters that they use and also the HD as well. Uh, fast produced two different versions of the titanium unit. One was the, uh, I believe it was a red body, um, or, I'm sorry, blue body, and the second one was the gray body. Uh, the gray body is the current one used, which is uh, these two filters here, the FWS 3003 and the FS 1001. This is the primary suction filter, this is the secondary pressurized filter, both of which equip with the, uh, the water and drain valves at the base so that you can uh, drain the water out of them, which not too many people do, but they still work very effectively. Um, earlier to the, uh, to the current gray body was the blue body one. That used the, uh, the FS2001 filter, a little bit smaller, about half the size, and the FWS3003 as well. Um, is one better than the other? Obviously this one here is going to uh, do a better job and last longer, um, provide a better service life because the filter is nearly twice the size. Um, but both were very effective. The, uh, the other unit, the HD system, uses the uh, FF1003 and the FWS3003. Um, HDs are used primarily on the Class 7 and 8 trucks, the, uh, the large leader displacement engines, um, not so much the pickups. So, um, the other unit they used was the, the Platinum Series, which I believe has been discontinued, but this is a very, uh, very uh, relatively simple design. It had one filter, which was the FWS 3003. It was very easy to prime because it was pressurized through this, and there was no suction filter. Um, the, uh, the basic design of the fast pump is, is very similar to this one here, except the other ones just have two filters on them. Now, to change the filters, all you really need to do is uh, you need to get yourself some rags because you would definitely spill some fuel, regardless of how careful you are. Um, you may need one or two different uh, filter wrenches, depending upon which model you have, because the, uh, the earlier ones use the smaller diameter filter on it, which is going to need a, a smaller wrench. And the, uh, the later ones, we use two of the large filters, the FWS 3003 and the, uh, the 1001. Uh, one wrench fits both sizes here. And, uh, of course, some gloves, if you uh, feel that you need to. Uh, we always like to use gloves here because the, uh, the fuel is not good for your skin. Um, all right, now, real quick, I'll just take you underneath the truck and show you the, uh, the pump itself. The vehicle we're going to use here today as the example is a 2011 uh, Chevy Silverado 3500 HD. Uh, it is equipped with the LML Duramax, which as uh, many people know or some do not, it does not come with any kind of lift pump from the factory. Whereas uh, Cummins and Ford do come with uh, a lift pump either in the tank or on the frame rail. And uh, they both serve uh, similar purposes of providing fuel transfer from the pump up to the uh, high pressure injection pump. Duramax chose not to do that. They dra uh, drag everything from the tank up to the pump um, under vacuum pressure. I'm sorry, under vacuum uh, suction. So uh, this is where we just choose to mount them on the LML chassis designs. Just wanted to show some quick pointers on how the fast pump works. Um, over here, this is, the, uh, this is the tank side. This is the suction side. As I uh, mentioned previously, the FS2001 is the suction filter. This comes in from your tank and uh, circulates through here up into the pump where it travels through to this side through the, uh, the manifold and in here is the FWS 3003. Now this one here is under pressure when the pump is normally functioning. You have the return and you have to the engine. Uh, this one, this particular design right here is utilizing the fast, um, the heater element which uh, in the colder weather up here in the northeast is uh, sometimes very ne uh, necessary. Um, I've already gone ahead and loosened these filters here just to show, um, you know, just for ease of the uh, the video purposes so we don't have to struggle with a wrench because these have been on here for about 10,000 miles. They're not ready to be replaced yet, but uh, I just chose to use this vehicle because it's what we had that was easily accessible. All right. Um, now, depending where the pump is mounted on the chassis will also dictate how well or how difficult it is to prime the filters on this unit. As you can see here, these filters are relatively even with the base of the tank, which of course if the tank was empty it wouldn't matter, but if the tank is full, that's going to provide a nice uh, gravitational pull from the, uh, from the pump unit and make it very easy to prime these filters. Now we normally and typically uh, write the date and the mileage when the filters were serviced last. Uh, this light's not cooperating with me. <clears throat> All right. So, when you go ahead and take these filters off here, this pump is mounted below the tank. So 
So as you can see, when this filter is loosened, it's going to keep drawing the, uh, the fuel out of the tank by gravity, um, creating a suction, and it's going to keep going and going. So we'll take this one off of here. Okay, I apologize there. My shirt, it got caught up in the uh, in my creeper, so I had to pause for a second. All right, I'm going to show you the filters here. I'm going to go ahead and change them just to make this uh, as best as a real-world application as possible. If you look inside the packages, you'll see this little O-ring here. This is a gasket to help seal the filter with the base of the uh, the, the fast titanium unit. Um, without it, you'll uh, you'll basically be uh, wasting time because it's going to re keep recirculating the dirty fuel with the clean fuel from both sides of the uh, the filter unit. It does not have the ability to seal off one side from the other. Uh, let me just unwrap these plastic wrap packages here. Again, this is the uh, this is the older style titanium unit using the uh, the smaller 2001 and the larger 3003 together. Um, the newer ones would be the uh, the gray body unit, and that would be using the um, I think it's the 1000 1001, the FS 1001 instead of the 2000. This is a little O-ring. You're going to go ahead and place that up here. When they get some age on them, they wind up falling off like this one here. This is the one that I removed. As you can see, it's, uh, it's grown from the exposure of the, uh, the fuel oil, and it's no longer able to stay on by itself. Okay, Let's this one up here. This is a lot easier when you have two hands. I do apologize. <laughs> We're just going to tighten this up snug till it contacts the base, right there. And the forward one, the forward one doesn't have an individual O-ring that seals it. Uh, it is just the uh, the external outer diameter O-ring that seals the uh, the filter to the unit. And this one you want to snug up, and you're not going to have to loosen this one again, regardless to prime it or not. And you're going to hand tight, and typically about uh, just like you would an oil filter, you go hand tight. Till it uh, contacts the, the gasket, contacts the base, and then you're going to go another quarter of a turn with the uh, with the wrench. That's just uh, just a little security so that it doesn't back off under vibration and uh, heat cycles. All right, this tank in this truck is uh, is actually almost empty, so it it stopped priming on its own. But uh, that's that's great actually for this example. So it'll show what it's like to uh, to do an application where the pump would be mounted higher on the chassis as opposed to being too low. All right, now what we're going to do is keep this secondary filter. Now, again, this is where it comes in from the, from the tank, and it goes out to your engine on this side. And this is the recirculating where the, uh, the air is extracted from the fuel. Uh, this filter here, again, you want, to, you want to tighten to the base and loosen it just a little bit, about a half a turn. And this is where it gets a little bit messy. Um, the Duramax is considering that uh, they never had a factory lift pump in them. They, uh, they don't have a circuit controlled by the ECM that turns on and off or primes the filter um, when the key uh, switch is uh, cycled on. Um, Dodges and Fords both have the ability to turn the key on and once the uh, ignition is turned on or the engine is bumped, when the crankshaft signal is detected, it will actually prime the filter for uh, anywhere from 7 to 12 seconds. Um, some of the older Dodges will actually continue priming even if the key is taken out, so you need to be careful with those. That would be like the uh, early 24 valves. 12 valve system would be set up just like this one. There is, uh, there is no factory electrical lift pump on them, so they need to be tapped off of a key switched uh, ignition source as well, just like these Duramaxes here. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go up, and we're going to turn this key on real quick, and you can hear the pump running. Now right now it is drawing fuel in from the tank under vacuum. You'll hear a difference in the engine once it starts uh, hitting the pump. There it goes, and here it comes. Okay, for all intents and purposes right now, our pump is primed. You should be able to tighten this back up again. Right there, wipe off some of the fuel. Now, 
Again, the, uh, the FAS is an acronym for fuel air separator system, which means that it will extract the air from the fuel um, as the pump keeps running continuously. Even if the engine is not started, it will continue to uh, extract the air and recycle fuel back to the tank. Now we should be able to just go ahead and start the truck. You can hear the pump prime once again. And there we go. Residual fuel dripping off of it, but uh, we just want to check for leaks now, which uh, they're using no leaks. There's, uh, we've never had a bad manufactured filter, but uh, I can't speak for the other crossed over filters from other companies, but the fast ones have been pretty good. Actually, I'll show you one more thing. Now, if you look inside of the fuel system, I don't know if you can really hear it in the video, but the fuel regularly uh, recirculates back to the tank coming off the filter. This is, uh, I'm sorry, coming off of the, uh, the titanium unit back through here, which I'll show underneath. That line goes back into the fill neck, and that's where your, uh, your fuel and air is uh, entered back into the tank. And that's where the air is extracted from your clean fuel supply up to the CP3 or the K16 or uh, whichever application it may be. On this case, it's the CP4. Now, if your engine had not primed, the, uh, the engine most likely would have died immediately. And um, it just takes a little bit of priming, doing the same thing over again. But typically, we don't have that issue happening over and over again. It, it catches the first time and every time if it's, uh, if it's done properly, just like this. Uh, again, we are Richie's Truck and Auto. If you have any questions, we are available on Facebook at Richie's Truck and Auto um, and on Instagram at 402dmax.com. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye.